So 100 years ago, there was enough people in the area that there was a Slavonic church started. So, and then at that time, the liturgy, uh, the service was said in Slavonic. And I think just before we started coming here about 12 years ago, um, maybe not too far before that, it was still being said in Slavonic. It was just so different. When we were growing up, it was, it was so nice because there were so many different, you know, the different Italians and Greeks and Polish and Slovak and Hungarian. It was just a good neighborhood. I mean, everybody got along well, and it was just wonderful. And, oh, what a change. Through the prayers and intercession of the glorious Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary, of all your saints, make straight our path, confirm us all in fear of you. I like how everybody sings everything because I think actually a lot of the churches have become so cantor-based that the cantor does all the work for the people. But yet, that could be beautiful, very beautiful, and that's, that could be God-honoring, but I think it's good if the people join in because it's not a production, it's not a performance, it's not just about a priest and a cantor, it's about everybody giving glory to God. And so I, I like the fact that everyone's willing to, to offer God their voices, I, people are very involved here. And so I felt nothing but, but welcomed here. And these people, they love God, they love their church, they love their community. <laughs> Byzantine liturgy is uh, presented is that it is it's all sung. Uh, you know, there aren't any instruments. There's, there's just a cappella. People are, are singing. So it, we're praying our prayer, our singing as prayer. With the icons in here, I mean, it just has a, a feeling. And then just as you're as you're in church, instead of just hearing a service, you can also would be praying. So icons are actually a, a window to the other world. Um, they're, they're written, when people make an icon, they don't write, they don't draw, they don't paint it. They're actually like writing it, and as you're creating this icon, they're praying. Blessed Virgin Mary is the, a very good example. You can look at her, and through her intercession, we also call her our intercessor, that our prayers, are, I don't know, they're enlivened or they're strengthened so that God can hear us. On my family donated about five or six of these, that large one up there, the one in the back there, you know, in memory of, you know, we, our family in memory of my dad and granddad and grandparents. We have several of these pictures in here for my family. And usually everybody goes in their same pews every week. When we were kids, too, the kids used to sit up in the first couple of rows, you know. Uh, always the kids together, you know. So different back then, you know, so many memories. And I remember growing up at Easter time, 
our church would be so crowded. Because of course there was, everybody had kids, you know, and they'd have to uh, line seats up along the pews during the Easter season because so many, you know, we had big families just when all the before the road come in, uh, a lot of families, and everybody had four or five kids, and it was just, uh, and all the kids would sit up front and. The men, a lot of times, on one side, the women on the other. It was just, just so many different things and how it changed over the years, you know. Later, and I believe it was in the 1920s, we had another split. Again, it was over some of these issues of, you know, not having a married priesthood, which is part of the identity and, uh, you know, of the Carpathian Rus and people. There, there were some more issues with Latinization where some Roman Catholic-minded priests and bishops were actually changing the Orthodox liturgy of the carpatho Rusin people. So some people got upset, some priests got upset, and they petitioned Constantinople, who in a sense is, is the mother church of the carpatho Rusin people, and they went into union with Constantinople. And so then you have, uh, you have the, 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 the carpatho Rusins that are under that church. You know, you have uh, the American carpatho Russian Orthodox Church, which is the same people. <laughs> when the road come through, we lost a lot of our parishioners. Our had to re people had to relocate, and because they were houses all along the road here, you know, all the way up the street. And the road come in, we lost a lot of people. We had a lot of Hungarians, Italians, Greeks, all different, you know, in our neighborhood. So it was a nice place to live, a nice place to attend, because I lived right next door, so it was so convenient for me. When we first had our church here, it was parking along the streets all the way down and, you know, never a place to park. They'd have to walk or, uh, you know, park along the streets. I grew up not, basically nothing. I think I was baptized in the Methodist church when I was about five. Didn't go to church after that and started dating this girl and she was Catholic and I would go to church with her on Sundays. But if it was a holy day, that was like a little too much for me, so I didn't go. And then I ended up marrying this, this person. This is my beautiful wife. And she, um, I know through her prayers and her family's prayers, it brought me into the church. All, all my life, I, I was, uh, I live right next door, so uh, I'm a lifetime member. 80 some years, I'm not gonna say exactly. <laughs> so, uh, and my dad and granddad were founders of the church. So it was just, uh, you know, all my life I've been here. Uh, this is a very loving church. I mean, it's, it's small, but it's powerful. I don't know. It was just, it just, just, just the, the, the beliefs and the memories and things growing up that you, it would just be hard to not come. Most of the time, the priest is facing the altar. In the Roman Catholic Church, with the Second Vatican Council, I think that changed, and the, they said that the priest you know, the priest was allowed um, to turn around and face the congregation, and, and that's what happened there. So that's a main difference with the, uh, those, the Catholic Church as far as the Roman Catholic and the Byzantine Catholic Church. Christmas Eve, we would have, like our, everybody had their own dinner at home or supper, Christmas Eve supper, and then we'd have the carolers. They used to call them, in our language, yes, Yes, Scotty, that means carolers. They would come around, they would be dressed in, you know, like the old fashioned gowns and everything. And they would sing Christmas carols and in our language, some, and some just, you know, English. And it was so many nice things to remember. Through the grace, the mercies, and the loving kindness of your only begotten Son, do we are blessed together with your all holy, good and life creating spirit. Now, never and forever. Amen. My dad and granddad were 
the founders here were just, it just, just meant so much that I was able to attend the 100th anniversary. It just, it was wonderful. I had a main seat at the table and my sister got, a, you know, for being the oldest in the, uh, the lifetime, you know, she got a little icon, which was very nice. So it was just wonderful, wonderful experience. Other Byzantine churches, I mean, they're bigger. I mean, how can you beat a small church like this? I mean, it, it's cozy, it's welcoming. You, you don't feel, you don't feel small in it. I was baptized here, first communion, got married, and my whole life was here. And it, it's just uh, so many wonderful memories. Yeah.